obviously when we started with you, one of the actually two glaring things that had been missed in your treatment up until this point, this is not knocking anyone, but it was just that you'd gone through a lot of the funk med, you know, the nutrient stuff, the supplements, things like that. But what was really obvious on you was the parts of your brain that control the gut were just not working like they should. And that was, you know, that's where the term functional neurology comes into play is that doing certain rehab things to stimulate those parts of the brain to get them stronger, to get what we call proto-oncogene synthesis or protein synthesis in those pathways so that they have more efficiency of their connectivity. And your midbrain area was really ramped up when I saw it, which is very typical in post-concussive syndrome. That's this area right here that they have shaded in red. And, the, and I think they shaded in red because it, it ties it more into the fight or flight systems. So we need that area to be able to activate. That's what gets us up. It's what makes us run from target, you know, from threats, things like that. But yours was ramped up to the point where it wasn't shutting off. Mm -hmm. Or to say it another way, if your fight or flight system is ramped up, and you know, I think I use the analogy with you, like your foot was stuck on the gas, yeah. and we needed to do stuff to be able to put your foot on the brake, which is down here, that vagal stuff, the paramedium, plantine, reticular spinal system, things like that. So those systems are your resting and digesting systems. Well, it stands to reason with what you were doing. You know, a lot of times when people lose like oral taunts and leaky gut and they start developing sensitivities to everything, it's because, you know, sometimes it's because, you know, their microbiome's off, they've had toxicity pathogens in the gut and things like that. But even that can still happen when the brain is weak or the brain's in balance. So it can go either direction with that. You can develop problems locally that lead up to brain stuff as well too, like in this tissue. Most people, it's the brain gut origin, like something happens up here and then their gut starts to go down the tube, so to speak, no pun intended on that. All right, so how this was manifesting, like some of the things we saw like on your VNG was when your eyes were looking or moving up and down, remember they would just drive in together, they like basically would cross. Well, now your eyes are holding that nice vertical plane like they're supposed to. Um, the other thing that was happening before is when you were doing certain things with uh, uh, like gaze holding and that you would fatigue really quick. Like your eyes were, were um, the, the hippos of the pupils and the, you know, your eyes, heck, you could even hardly keep your eyes open on some of the stuff on there before. Um, and now those kind of things that like you're able to maintain your positioning longer, you're able to. So basically some of the stuff that would indicate like this area of the brain stem right here is for your gaze holding centers, for example. Mm -hmm. And that one is showing that you can maintain that lo much longer now, okay? Conversely, the stuff that was showing that this was overactive, i.e. the eyes driving in, that's not doing that anymore. So we, you know, it's a combination of, yeah, not only did we start taking your foot off the gas, we were also putting your foot on the brake system. Those double went across the board. Your saccades were still a bit slow and whatnot, that's why, but you know, really, to be honest with you, that wasn't my focus with you. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, anytime I see you in the future, I'm gonna do a little bit more like frontal lobe activation and things like that. But this was the meat and potato stuff. This was obviously why you're here to see me. We can always optimize neocortical stuff. So the newer part of the brain, you know, it looks like the boxing glove kind of thing. We're gonna, you know, anytime I have you, I'll still do stuff. We'll still do stuff to reinforce what we're working on here. Um, but we'll also bring it up and keep working higher up into the system because obviously that's there's always room for improvement with all of us. Like you know, that's just a given. But um, but we'll, we we wanted to get the nuts and bolts under control first, and then so that you can start getting more of that that oral tolerance. Second thing, obviously, was tied into that was both directly and indirectly it was all your biomechanical stuff, like the chiropractic stuff that really hadn't been addressed either. So now like your neck's moving well. Your jaw muscles are much more balanced. So part of that wind up, especially on your right mesencephalon, was your your whole right side, like your sternocleidomastoid. Um, you know the I should say the right mesencephalon, but the right wind up stuff, like your TMJ imbalance, the right SCM balance, that kind of stuff. That was you know as a byproduct as well too, because that directly there's some linkage to that as well. Right. So both segmentally from your neck, like the impact and anything else going on, computer stuff, things like that. And then the actual neurological windup too, like your chewing muscles are tied into that system. Um, I always use the example, and that's why you're not like having to use your mouth guard. Yeah. Because that, 
that foot stuck on the gas system, well, now that we've been able to take that off mostly, now you don't, you know, you're not losing that frontal inhibition and it work just starts to wind up and, and clench and grind. So, so those are all just windows to both like directly and, and indirectly neurologic. So when I say directly, obviously we did some stuff to release this whole area directly, but also indirectly the neurological pathways that would, you know, be dialing that up. We've dialed that back down as well too. So what does all that mean in practical terms? Well, obviously now you're able to get into more of a lower brainstem resting digesting state, which bodes well for as we start to introduce the foods. And that now is the, you know, the true test of all that stuff as we get more into that, you know, moving forward from this day on kind of thing. And as you continue to build up that oral tolerance um, and the GI lining is going to be more intact and more receptive to everything because all, you know, when this is firing properly in here, like I showed you on this diagram, you know, that's your control valve for all of this stuff, like pancreatic activity, liver enzyme activity, gallbladder release, uh, kidney function, stomach acid production, like everything is based on, on that area. So now that we've turned on that, the keys to the ignition there, that just, it's going to allow for you to have, you know, these systems in play where instead of your body fighting everything that you're eating and developing sensitivities to everything, when that, now it gives it a fighting chance to say, okay, now it's breaking it down into the micromolecular structure that's supposed to be for absorption that won't trigger an immune response. And, you know, you'll have better tissue perfusion, i.e. to like to the gut lining, so that, that it's gonna help the, the wall build up again, so to speak. And, and then as we do that, we may start to come back around and reintroduce the idea of doing supplements with you to further that rebuilding process, if you will. Yeah, uh, you know, I think that was like the really, because as, as soon as I realized that I was able to sleep better, then also the jaw is not, uh, so that's when I think it was the biggest effect. Yeah. yeah. And to that point, your reticular activating system is right there, the fire part of your diurnal cycle and your pineal gland and all that stuff. So um, that has to do with your sleep-wake cycle. Well, again, you know, you're in fight or flight mode, you're not supposed to be sleeping. That's so it's, it's designed to have, you know, wake you up to go run from the lion or whatever. And again, we need that, but not when you're not running from a lion and you're trying to sleep at night. So that was all part, same thing. That was all part of taking your foot off the gas on that. So it stands to reason that all that stuff, as we wound that down, that inversely related to that is the jaw feeling better, the less grinding, less, you know, waking up or better sleep cycles, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, everything's looking good there. So our primary goals were accomplished, you know, from, from the vantage point of the, the functional neuro and the chiropractic stuff. And not to say those are exclusive of each other, but that they, they do go hand in hand because as we release, you know, a lot of those feedback loops that are tied into that are tied into biomechanics of the spine and that kind of stuff as well too. Case in point, the pathways that come off of here are what control all your postural muscles, but then all your postural muscle and joint feedback comes back through here, right back into that. So it's this cyclical loop. Now that loop may be happy, or in your case, it was unhappy because everything was so jacked up in there. So. And then that's part of the problem and why these things can be chronic is it's a, it becomes a self-perpetuating or cyclical loop, you know, because one bad apple feeds into this bad apple, but then that bad apple, you know, reinforces that one. And now you're stuck in this perpetual cycle of bad feedback loops. So part of my job as a, as a conduit for, you know, getting that system, you know, it's my job to go and break the cycle, so to speak. And so, like I said, that's, that was mission accomplished. So, so moving forward, what we're going to do is, is have you start to, you know, slowly introduce stuff um, with your food sources and then I'll, I'll follow up with you sometime. I'll talk to you guys more about that at dinner, but um, we'll kind of play it by ear as to, you know, when you guys will, you know, I'm going to kind of gauge it on maybe like a two or three week window uh, where I'll have you pop in again just to check in and see how you're doing. And if things are holding well and you're continuing to progress, we'll kind of, you know, play it off that. So. Sure. All right, questions. Um, our, my first question is actually kind of um, unrelated slightly. One of the things that uh, came up was um, like mold in the house, mm -hmm. but I did a laboratory test that takes like, uh, uh, we take a sample and mm -hmm. send to a lab. Yep. And when the remediation people came, they were saying that, um, um, you know, this is no house is gonna pass this kind of test because this is like lab grade equipment, and they did their own test, which is like an air test, um, which sees mold outside versus outside. Question is, 
um, how serious do you think that it, that would be? Like, is it like something like pretty emergency for me to move out of where I am right now and go to a house that doesn't have or has less mold or something? Well, I mean, I'll say the short answer is yes. If you got dealing with mold now, I'd also want to look at like maybe running a mycotoxin profile and like I'll, a good example is the Vibro. I think that looks at thirty one of the mold types and sees how you're reacting to them. Oh. So we can run that mycotoxin test and it's like arguably the most accurate on the market to see are you developing inflammation and immunological responses to you know black mold or whatever. Um, so that's something that we can actually look at so that you can make a better informed decision before you jump ship and, and move out of the house. So, right. um, it, but yes, I mean, in short, mold will derail everything. Like it's definitely one of those pathogens that can be, you know, certain molds are more pathogenic and more virulent and whatnot that you know, have a greater effect on the human body than others, but it's something that we could uh, definitely look at. Now, also, uh, don't even forget, because I'll talk to you about re mold remediation stuff and some ideas, and, and I'll bring my um, MacBook in when we go for dinner, and I'll show you what we use for our mold protocols and everything. So I'll just go over the whole thing with you. Okay. okay. That sounds good. And then the, I guess the next one would be like, um, like based on you know what we've seen and moving forward, um, as you said, you know some of the stuff we can do at the top, but still, um, um, you know, stuff we'd be doing in line with what we already did. What are some like um, things we haven't really, let's say, couldn't do because I was, you know, way worse before on the same, you know, everything to do with fight or flight. Yeah, in that direction. I wouldn't say you couldn't do anything I needed to do on okay. that front. Like you, you were able to tolerate once we got things going. You were able to tolerate everything we would do for bagel stem in the office and based on your findings. So. Um, there wasn't anything that was like kind of like left out of the equation. Now it's getting just more into, you know, with this say, I, when I teach, I'm like, this is the tree trunk of the nervous system. I think I might've said that to you. And then everything branches out from there. So it will have an upstream effect or up tree effect, like the branches, the, the leaves, all that stuff. You know, we can always keep improving that to flourish and while well maintaining the integrity of that system. But it wasn't like we couldn't, like, oh, like he's not tolerating that at all. It's really just your stuff that you have to start to implement, not have to, but are going to start implementing at home as far as reintroducing the foods. And then we'll re-navigate the waters of, okay, can he tolerate, say, this gut repair supplement, this digestive enzyme, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So. Got it, got it. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. And, like, like let's, do we, is there a, is there, a, like, um, scenario where like I start to have to like it start notching again I would have to use a mod card again or like it could happen I would never say no to that question but I don't think that's going to be the case with you now it but that's part of why I don't just send you off and say okay I'll never see you again kind of thing right. what I start doing at this point is we start to say okay we've we've laid the foundation let's start building on that both at home and then when I follow up with you I'll just make sure you're not regressing at For all sure. So that we don't, you know, and, and if you tell me, like Trevor, I went, up, you know, this week and I, all the wheels fell off or something, just call me and say, hey, you know, if I, if I, whether it's now or a year from now, if I haven't seen you in a while and you feel like stuff is winding up, don't hesitate to say, I got to get in and get tuned up and right. do some stuff. So don't ever feel like just because you're booked out to a certain point that you can't call and preemptively cut that off at the pass. So. Cause there's not, that's not the problem with this, that the, I always find this the hardest part of treatment plans is there's not a, an exact science to that transition. It's more of a trial and error thing to say, okay, let's see how you do with two weeks. Let's see how you do with three weeks, you know, and so on and so on. So. For sure. Okay. That makes sense. Good.